Hello, everyone. This is your host, Sanjeev Goyal. Every week, I bring future leaders, mavericks, and the people who are making the difference on my show. This time, I have invited a dear friend of mine. His name is Mr. Mark Women. Mark is a legend. Those who live in Las Vegas, we lovingly call him Godfather. Let's talk to him and ask him about the future of Las Vegas. Mark, welcome to our show. I'm happy to be here with you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Mark. So, Mark, very simple questions I have. You have seen Las Vegas evolving and changing in shape, form, and what it does, even its clientele, and especially last two decades. You have seen stock market going really up in the late 90s. You have seen 2007, you have seen 9-11, you have seen 2011, you saw the COVID. Where are we going? You know, as, far as Las Vegas is a topic, I get that question pretty much every day of my life. You know, when is this going to be over? What's going to happen? And as you mentioned, you know, there was 2001 and, and that was a big dip. And then August of 2008, uh, we're always seem to be ground zero for all of these depression type events. And then again, you know, we went from 2008, it probably took us to 2012 to get back up. And yeah. then uh, and then March of 2020, you know, we ran into another big stumbling block here. And of course, the challenge for us in Las Vegas is that with the pandemic, everything we do is group events. You know, convent, without convent, Rob Goldstein, the CEO of Las Vegas Sands said it best. He said, without conventions, there is no comeback for Las Vegas, right? So we've kind of been getting by because of stimulus and unemployment, and it's a very different demographic on the strip these days. Um, but, you know, we have, to, we have to see where this pandemic is going to get to. So, Mark, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm an entrepreneur. Every time I look at the situation, I look at the problems and I see as an opportunity. Let's go back in the history of Las Vegas. 20 years ago, I will say roughly around 20, 22 years ago, there was no major casino in um, Asia. Then we have Macau, we have Singapore, and these two destinations have taken more than 50% of our players, our business. We all thought that Las Vegas market is going to be tanked. We may not have a lot of opportunities here. And Las Vegas from a gaming capital, it transformed itself completely to entertainment capital. So what I'm trying to say it is whenever we are pushed as a Vegas resident, now I'm a resident of Nevada, I believe there is something very unique about the city. What is that? People are fighters. We find ways. How can we grow? How can we thrive? How can we continue to evolve? Will Vegas be same in next 10 years or 20 years? You and me both know, no. Get, whether it's gambling, entertainment, food, everything is changing and evolving. Even the qualities of show, you and me both remember 20 years ago, it was pretty okay. But in last 20 years, we have the best of the best shows. One of my friends has this outdoor shooting range, Shoot Vegas. That place I go and I've seen in five years, earlier it was just a range. Today, it is an adult playground. So question I have for you is, what is next for Vegas? I understand sports betting is going to be big, but the big thing we see is we have amazing stadium now, great team. Sports is becoming a big, big thing for uh, Vegas. So do you see that as becoming the gaming destination now, real sports or something else? Yeah, I think Las Vegas it has a legacy of being a place you can cut loose. Uh, you know, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. I would say from a business perspective, the tribal gaming has taken uh, away far more than Asia. Uh, you know, when the, unfortunately, when the pandemic hit, most of your big players, I'm talking about people of a million to a $5 million credit line, they couldn't get up here. They, you, you can't get out of Hong Kong and China and that. Um, and even for Macau, it's had a huge impact. You know, they used to be 70, 80% junkets and VIP high end, and now they're 80% mass market, meaning small players. 
they're really having a hard go of it down there. They just can't seem to get the, uh, the COVID under control down there. But uh, I just think that Las Vegas is always Las Vegas, even though there's some beautiful properties. You know, you have Grayton uh, Resort Casino in Sonoma. Um, these are Las Vegas looking properties, right? I mean, they're built on that grand scale, but still not Las Vegas. You know, not, people, are always, oh, people are always going to come to Las Vegas. So, Mark, Las Vegas is not just gaming. Las Vegas is not just the sports. I moved here a few years ago, and I'm just blown away with the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. Red Rock Canyon, Utah, uh, Arizona, Sedona, all these places are just like a couple of hours drive. And it's so beautiful, so natural. What do you think about the tourism around these natural places? Yeah, we have the largest man-made lake in the world, right? In Lake Mead, so we have that. We have world-class skiing in Utah. As you mentioned, uh, two miles from my door is Red Rock National Park, which is beautiful. Uh, 45 minutes to an hour is uh, Valley of Fire. I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible up here. Now, you, you can't really go do that stuff from about June 15th to September 15th, but today I think it's 70 degrees outside. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's only about a two hour ride up to Zion, you know, mm -hmm. which is arguably one of the great national parks in the entire country. So that's phenomenal. So, Mark, what I'm trying to say it is in terms of the opportunities, do you see that is one area entrepreneurs should think about, look into that? How can they really do something around that? Well, so. We've been trying to diversify our economy since I came here in 1995, 26 years ago. Wow. And uh, my friend Tony Shea of Zappos, who's now passed away, uh, probably did the most, right? We, we were not able to produce 5,000 or 10,000 technology graduates every semester. And that, that's always been a challenge for us. So we, we do have some, some very good entrepreneurs that have moved into the area, mostly to escape the 13.2% state income tax in California. And, uh, you know, you can sell your house for $3 million in LA and buy that same house for a million dollars here and not pay state income tax. So I think it is a very attractive uh, area for entrepreneurship. The biggest challenge is talent trying to find the software. I, I had two clients this week. Uh, I own an executive recruiting company and they came to me for mid-level software developers. I said, I, I won't even work on it because it's too hard. They're all hired guns. It's mostly local talent. This isn't like San Francisco where you have thousands of high-end developers. You know that because you're from San Francisco. It's, it's not the same environment. And it's hard to get the folks that are working at Google or Apple or Facebook to move here. Yeah. No, I'm facing the same problem. We moved our operations here. And it's not easy for us to uh, relocate our team from Bay Area. Mm -hmm. We thought we would be able to hire people overnight. And I started looking around <laughs> and I said, wow, the, do you know there are only 17,000 software developers in the whole Las Vegas? Yeah. So, so I agree with you. And that's one reason all the companies I have invested into, uh, I'm saying, hey, why don't you open an office in Las Vegas? Is a great, but who's going to work? How right. are we going to make things happen? So talent is definitely one issue, but let's go a little bit, uh, push it a little, this issue of uh, what Las Vegas can be. So the areas, mm -hmm. uh, I had a great conversation with Gavin a few weeks ago, and we discussed about how about we take Las Vegas as an interesting place, as a great place, as an amazing destination, but it can offer a lot more. We have 300 plus days of sun, really bright, good sun. That's why we have so many solar farms, but we don't really have any research. We don't have any innovation, technology or innovation hub for solar or energy. Can we be the destination? Or can we be the solar valley of the world? And knowing the kind of people we have in Vegas, we have amazing people. We have amazing investors. People want to take risks. They have taken risks. And building these casinos, investing billions of dollars and hoping somebody will come is a huge risk. So Las Vegas, I believe, is in a phenomenal community. We all have to think outside the box. And this is the time we can make that happen. 
Do you see that? Yeah, but we, you know, I'm going to tell you again, Sanjeev, we've been saying this for the last 30 years. You know, the, the good news is we don't have earthquakes, fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes. We don't have any of the natural disasters. It's hot during the summer. But I'll tell you, uh, Lake Tahoe area, Incline Village, Reno, has really picked up. Um, beautiful up there. You get more of a change of the seasons. Um, quite a few of the Silicon Valley folks have come over there. Actually, property prices in Reno are now higher than Las Vegas. Wow. Um, and That's hard to believe. Well, you we have like Teslas up there, right? Amazon. Actually, Amazon came here and I poached quite a bit of the casino talent. I know quite a few of the uh, casino executives actually went over to work for Amazon. They pay pretty good. So um, I think it, it's happening. It's happening slowly. But is uh, Google or Microsoft going to move their headquarters here? No. And the reason they're not is we just don't have the... the, cloud, talent. the you know. yeah. So I, I agree with you, Mark. And that's the reason if we try to become the... Uh, in competition through Silicon Valley, I don't think that's a good place. That's why I'm proposing that we should think of a different industry, which is upcoming industry. Uh, nobody mm -hmm. has claimed that place, number one. Second is, it's a phenomenal opportunity. I mm -hmm. can think of several sectors. Energy is definitely one big one. Uh, yeah. Food is another one. There are major food innovation happening and we live in a desert. If we can replicate what is happening in Israel, Nevada can feed the whole America because that's the kind of technology people have developed in Amsterdam and Israel. Two places, it's just phenomenal what they have done with the food. Health, we have a great place, a lot of baby boomers, a lot of retirees, phenomenal place. Our population has grown tremendously. We have three and a half million plus uh, president around just uh, this 30, 40 mile radius. So there is phenomenal opportunity. Now, Boston has taken a lead on the healthcare. So we know there are a lot of health startup in Boston. Can we recreate that? Yes, but the problem is the same thing, talent. Energy, nobody has a talent, whether it's Bay Area or anywhere else in the world. So point I'm trying to make it is if we can find a different vertical and really become good in that, I'm not sure what is that. It can be even outdoor because there are phenomenal opportunities. And especially in COVID, I realize reconnecting ourselves with nature changes us. I thought more people will be obese in COVID time. Actually, it's other way around. More people got healthier, more in COVID, which is interesting. Because what I'm seeing it is more you push humanity, it changes, we transform, and we find ways how to do better than where are we. People got time for reflection. People got time to really understand what they want. And that's what is happening. So let's talk about entertainment because that is the core to Las Vegas. Entertainment, we grew from doing small shows to now we do multi-million dollar shows, Circuit du Soleil and all. We get the best of the best singers and performers and of course, we pay them millions of dollars on multi-million dollar shows. You have produced several shows of yourself. What you see as the future of entertainment and especially live entertainment? Is it going to be the same or is it going to be different in next decade? That's a good question. We've, we've morphed into that Cirque du Soleil model, right? Um, bigger and more spectacular. Uh, I think residencies will continue to happen. Things like Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, Elton John. Um, I think there's always going to be for your high end players. I think that's always going to be a draw. And then, um, you know, Spiegel World, which started out with a show called Absinthe in a circus tent at Caesars. Then they put opium over at Cosmo. And now they've got a comic saloon at Venetian. And these are, this is the new age variety show right with with trapeze artists and hand balancers and all kinds of really interesting and, and they're they're very entertaining they're very entertaining also you know this is the home for the 70s and 80s rockers <laughs> you know I, I mean all the 70s and 80s bands you know they they all come up here and they we have an older demographic we have a large 
uh, retired community up here, and they lo they love that old school stuff. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time today. I've learned a great deal about it, and I can't thank you enough for your time today. Nope, oh, thanks. Great to see you. Stay safe. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much.